Okay guys, this is slide three in our uh, civil rights unit, Things Turn Violent. Um, and we will start with a uh, discussion of a group of protesters known as the Freedom Riders. There was a, uh, a federal court order that interstate bus lines, so buses that cross state lines, they go from state to state, uh, could not be segregated, nor could the bus stations um, be segregated. So civil rights uh, activists, and these are led by SNCC, again, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, SNCC organizes these freedom riders. These are civil rights po protesters who would board buses, Greyhound buses, um, in the north and head south. Um, to get off the bus at these bus stations and make sure that the bus stations were um, integrated, that they were desegregated, uh, and that the buses themselves were desegregated. Well, word would spread when the Freedom Riders were coming to town, and the local uh, welcoming committee, if you want to call them that, would, uh, would go out to greet them, um, and they would line up along the side of the road, and as this bus came rolling down, uh, they would throw things at the bus, at least rocks, things like that. But in some cases, they would throw Molotov cocktails. Now, a Molotov cocktail, for those of you who don't know, uh, is basically just a glass bottle full of some sort of flammable liquid, let's say gasoline. Um, you put gasoline in a glass bottle, shove a rag in the top of the bottle, and light the rag on fire. You throw the bottle at something, and the bottle hits, the glass breaks, uh, gasoline spreads everywhere, and so does fire. Uh, you see the picture down here at the bottom. It's a picture of a Greyhound bus burnt out um, as uh, it was rolling down the road there. You see the, uh, the protesters here sitting on the ground outside. Uh, these would be federal agents uh, on the left there. But what's left of the bus, because these buses would often catch fire, uh, as these Molotov cocktails were thrown at them. Um, if you're lucky, you got out of the bus with your life. Uh, and then maybe, when you got off the bus, standing there waiting for you, were some local uh, white supremacists, activists, uh, to beat you up. So, you know, it was sort of a uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. But the Freedom Riders often uh, took their lives in their own hands here. They knew what they were doing was very dangerous, but they were determined uh, that they had a right to do this, and they were going to do it. Brings us to our next name. You've got a lot of names in this, uh, this unit here. You're going to need to know. James Meredith, um, in October 1962, um, tries to register for classes at Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi. Um, Mississippi is one of the most segregated states in the South, uh, and Meredith tries to register for classes. Now, he's not just some average guy trying to go to college. Um, Meredith is a former Air Force officer. Uh, he was a veteran of the Air Force. Um, he had an undergraduate degree, two undergraduate degrees already, and was trying to register for law school at Ole Miss. So this is a very bright, very intelligent, very well-spoken uh, man. He is turned away. He applies to the, uh, the federal courts who say, no, you have a right to go there. So Meredith eventually will register for classes, but federal troops, uh, federal marshals, have to be sent to Oxford, Mississippi, uh, where Ole Miss is to ensure law and order is kept and that Meredith is not killed. Okay. Uh, next, let's turn our attention to Birmingham. Dr. King calls Birmingham the most segregated city in America. And, uh, in fact, it is from Birmingham that Dr. King will write his most famous uh, treatise, his most famous piece of writing here, called Letter from a Birmingham Jail. Uh, he's been jailed in Birmingham, and he writes a letter to local uh, church leaders urging them to support his cause because uh, they say that it is... Dr. King and the civil rights leaders that are causing all the problems. And he says, we're not asking for any more than the rights that we have. And he urges the other church leaders in Birmingham to join him. 
Um, Birmingham is a pivotal city. It's really Birmingham and the events that happened there that changed public opinion uh, toward the civil rights workers here. Birmingham is controlled by the police chief, a man named Eugene Bull Connor. And Bull Connor, the local police chief, was as racist as they come. Um, There you see a, a picture of Connor right there. And Connor would use police and police attack dogs like this, you see up at the top of the page, to, uh, he would turn the dogs loose on protesters. Now these are peaceful, nonviolent protesters following Dr. King. Uh, and they would have these dogs turned on them uh, to attack them. The Birmingham Fire Department, Bull Connor, orders the fire department to blast away at protesters with, Uh, fire hoses. Now you think, oh, that's no big deal, you know, they're getting water sprayed on them. Uh, Just to give you some idea, from 40 feet away, 40 feet away, a fire hose full open can tear a brick loose from a brick wall. That's That's how much force fire hoses have. And here you see firefighters from a lot closer than 40 feet blasting away here. This would have shattered this glass they're aiming at. Uh, Blasting away at these protesters. But for the first time, incidents like these two that you see in this picture get televised. News stations, national news crews are in Birmingham to film what's happening to the protesters. And when people all across the country see peaceful, Nonviolent protesters being met with violence against them, like fire hoses and attack dogs. Um, public opinion starts to turn to the side of the protesters. So Birmingham is a, a, a pivotal city here. Okay. All right, let's jump ahead here to August 1963. Um, we see the very famous march in Washington, D.C., led by Dr. King. Uh, 200,000 demonstrators, protesters, black and white both, uh, would march with Dr. King to uh, the Lincoln Memorial where he would give his famous I Have a Dream speech, uh, calling for a a world where uh, people of all color can can live together peacefully. Uh, If you've ever been to the Lincoln Memorial, I don't know if you've noticed or not, um, if you have, good for you. If not, if you ever get there, look for it. About halfway up the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, on one of the little steps, uh, is a plaque marking where Dr. King stood, uh, giving his uh, his famous speech. Uh, But that's August 1963, Dr. King's famous I Have a Dream speech. Now, shortly after that, uh, several very famous murders take place. The first one involves a civil rights worker in Mississippi, a man named Medgar Evers. He was the, the leader of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. Uh, and Edgars is shot and killed in his driveway in front of his house. Um, a very public sort of killing. People saw it happen, but nobody was ever found guilty of doing it. Right? Uh, also, uh, a month later, in September 1963, uh, a church is bombed in Birmingham. Uh, A black Baptist church. Uh, Dynamite is thrown into the church. Four young black girls uh, were killed in the bombing. So it's not just adult protesters that are the victims here. Children often. We saw first with Emmett Till uh, and now four young black girls in Birmingham killed when a church is bombed. Okay. 